Hi, fourth graders. Thanks for joining me today for math. We are still going to be working on our windows and towers. And you'll be working with all the types of towers today, the single towers, the double towers, the square towers, and the corner towers. We're going to work on something called backwards problems for these different types of towers. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, here we go. On this slide in your Google Slides or your assignment, this first page of practice is about single towers. So in your head, I want you to picture the start of that single tower. The single tower is one cube with four windows around the outside and one skylight that counts as a window on top. So that's the first floor. Now, the reason these are backwards problems is that you're given the number of windows and you have to figure out if it's possible to have this number of windows in the tower. And if yes, then you have to write how many floors the tower has. So let's take a look at that first problem. Think about that single tower with those five first windows, four are on the outside and one is on the top. Okay, so. If I add another floor, that would be the second floor. There are four windows around the outside, plus my skylight on top. My second floor would have nine windows. And if I do it again for the third floor, four windows around the outside for each floor, plus our skylight, that would, gi that would give me 13 windows. I could continue on and do four times four, fourth floor times four windows for four plus one skylight equals 17 windows. And I could keep going and keep going. Um, that's going to take a long time. So there has to be an easier strategy to get us to 60 windows. So I want you to think about your multiples of four. Is there anything that can get us close to 60 and don't forget about that skylight. So I think there's a better strategy. I can probably say that the number of floors, all I'm doing is increasing the number of floors, but we know that there are always going to be four windows on each floor plus that one skylight and that will give us our total number of windows. So if I continue and I use this strategy, that would help me, or this rule, that would help me figure out, can I get to 60 windows? Well, let's try it. I know that 12 times four is 48, right? But I can still do some more, so let's go to, oh, I know, 15 times four, that gives me 60. Now, if I add that skylight on, that would give me, on the 12th floor, that would give me 49 windows. And on the 15th floor, add that skylight, that would give me 61 windows. So, let me go down. Let's try the 14th floor. 14 times four equals 50 six, but I have to add that skylight and that would give me 57. So there's no way that I can have 60 windows in a single tower. So the answer for this one would be no. But I also, by figuring out number one, I've also answered number two because can a single tower have 61 windows? Well, yeah, here it is. I have used my little strategy or my rule, and I know that this is the 15th floor with one skylight, and that has given me 61 windows. So yes, it can. So you're gonna use what you know, and what you figured out to help you answer the rest of the questions. The last question for this set of single tower questions is asking you if you can have a single tower with exactly 105 windows. So you're gonna answer yes or no, and then you need to explain why it's yes or no. 
Okay, so the next slide is all about double towers. So in your head, think about those double towers. Double towers have two cubes side by side. And we can use the same strategy to figure out the number of windows, not Z. So F for floors times double towers have one, two, three, four, five, six windows around for each floor. And then we have two skylights. So I can use this little rule to help me figure out if I will have a double tower with any of these numbers of windows. And then you're going to move to your square and corner towers. So your square, cor your, your square towers have those four cubes that are arranged in a square. Just make sure you're looking at the square towers. Um, four cubes arranged in a square. So our little formula or rule that we can use are the number of floor times how many windows are there on that square tower let's see one two three four five six seven eight are on the outside plus the four skylights which also count as windows on top and that will give us our number of windows for square towers and we can answer our questions using this formula or rule and then the last one is about your corner towers. In your head, think about your corner towers. Your corner towers are three cubes that are arranged in an L shape. And if I'm going to use the formula, I have the number of floors times, let me think how many windows are on the outside of that floor. First floor, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight windows on each floor, plus we only have three skylights on the corner towers, and that will give us our number of windows. Okay, so that is how you're going to answer the questions on your practice. When you're finished with your practice, there is a quiz, but please, no worries. It's only five questions. So let me share with you how to answer questions on the quiz. Do, 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 do. All right, so for the quiz, it says to use the line option or the shape option to mark your answers. Where are the line options and the shape, shape options, Mrs. Austin? Well, if you take your little mouse and hover over, you have all these options up here. And here, mine's on Scribble, but it's actually the line tool and it looks like this. So you select the line tool and you, let me try that again, select the line tool and you can take your, take your choice and you can move it wherever you're going to go. I don't know, so I'm just showing you. And then you just let the click go and it leaves the line there. Again, to draw the line, go to the line tool and you can answer by drawing a line. The other thing, let me undo those with the undo button to get rid of them. The rest of the questions you can answer using um, not the line tool, but shapes tool. Since these are squares, I'm gonna use a square, but you can use pretty much any shape you want. Um, I can use a square to answer, and I just draw the square and I can fill in with whatever color I want. So now you can see that I filled in that answer. Again, I'm gonna show it again. I'm gonna use the shape tool. I'm gonna to use, well, I'll do a heart for this one. And I'm gonna draw the heart in here. And I'm going to go up and fill my heart. See the fill color? And I'm gonna fill it with pink so that I know that that's the answer you've chosen. And the last slide, oh, for these bubble ones, you can use the, go to the line tool and go to the 
bottom for scribble and you can color in whatever choice you're choosing. That's not necessarily the right choice. I'm just showing you how you can use the scribble tool. And then the last slide to do a circle, you can either use a shape and circle your answer and then you can move your shape over. You can change the color of your shape. You can say, oh no, I don't want, I want a transparent circle, which means there's no color inside. And you can move the circle down. You can change the color. I don't know. I would, I would use transparent so we can see your choice. Or let me undo the circle. I'm just clicking undo so it erases all of my tracks. So you can also just simply use the scribble tool to circle your answer. I don't know which answer it is. Actually, I do, but I'm not telling. So that's how you use the tools in your slides. Okay, so I believe that's about it. I will be going over um, how to use the tools in the slides today during um, office hours at 10.30. I also have my Zoom room open throughout the day, unless I have a meeting, where you can come in and ask me questions, say hi, get some help. Um, I look forward to seeing you. Have a wonderful Wednesday.